So I've had the Nikon D850 for very nearly a year now and shot more than 25,000 frames with it. Probably a good point to stop and have a look at how it's getting on and assess some of its strengths and weaknesses. So I've been shooting with the 850 for very nearly 12 months now. Strictly speaking, more than that because I helped on the launch and worked with an early sample camera. In that time, I've used it on a massive range of shoots from controlled studio situations through to very fast moving outdoor location stuff and events. Probably easiest if I simply talk about this on your straightforward old fashioned pros and cons. First off, let's talk about how robust it is. Uh, I've been really pleasantly surprised with how many knocks it's taken, how much water's ended up getting on it, and how it's kept on rocking. Uh, I've shot lots of events and things like adventure races with it, and yeah, it hasn't batted an eyelid at some of the punishment it's been through. And of course, it's smaller and lighter than my D4, which is a big plus. Secondly, kind of related to that actually, um, the flip out angled screen has been much more useful than I thought it would be. Um, I was very cynical about that because I figured it would be the first thing to come snapping off, but actually the fact it's recessed a little bit protects it quite a lot, and having that ability to view it from a different angle is really, really handy. Uh, it's particularly handy, I find, for shooting uh, video or shooting silently because I can angle it away from my face a little bit and you know almost not look like I'm taking pictures, which can make me quite sort of surreptitious and give me that extra ability to uh, shoot when people aren't expecting. Um, I put an original review up for the 850 about a year ago and I talked about how good the video capabilities were. Obviously it's got more than previous Nikon cameras have got with 4K and 120 frames a second and things, but where I found it most useful is in just the video functionality, so how quickly uh, I'm able to change settings on it with the touch screen and the quick menu and things. Um, how much easier it is to zoom in and focus and the autofocus that will follow faces is very, very handy. Those sort of things make it much, much more useful for video for me. Something else that I've taken, again, more advantage of than I thought I would is the medium raw resolution. Uh, I shoot all sorts of different things, as I say, and from time to time, 45 million pixels is just simply far too much data. There is just no need for massive great files like that because they're only ever gonna be used online. And having those massive files, of course, slows down every aspect of the processing. It slows down, you know, all the work I do in Lightroom, it slows down delivery of the files, and 24 million pixels at medium raw is still ample for pretty much every use I might really need, but it speeds up all those processes, so very handy to have, and of course I still keep the advantage of shooting in raw mode. I've done an entire video about shooting with the 850 silently, um, because I love it, it's just so, so helpful. It's really useful when I'm shooting things like golf events, it's great when I'm shooting reportage of any sort, because I can just operate totally silently, um, particularly with something like a 70 to 200 mil on, I can be at a decent distance from people and capture people behaving totally naturally. Or I can operate in environments where I'm not supposed to be making any noise and still get full resolution shots. Great. Needless to say, at 45 million pixels and a full frame sensor, the image quality is absolutely superb. Um, particularly with decent prime lenses, although I found that my 70 to 200, um, because I finally upgraded to one of the newer ones, gives pretty good quality too. Um, what it has done sadly is shown up the uh, flaws, shall we say, in my 24 to 70, which is now more than 10 years old, um, because of course, something as high quality as a 45 megapixel sensor is pretty unforgiving of your lenses. Um, I wouldn't put anything other than very, very good glass on a D850 because it will show up any flaws in them. Lastly, I found the battery life to be really, really good. Uh, I've always been slightly skeptical about you know, the, the smaller batteries you get in things like 800s, 850s, um, but I've done more than a thousand shots in a day uh, on several occasions now, and the battery level is only just starting to come off the top. Uh, now I'm sure those battery levels aren't 100% accurate, and of course those are events when I'm not videoing and I'm not viewing the back of the screen all the time, but in terms of actually taking shots, yeah, you could probably get 1500 to 2000 shots in a day before you had to recharge the battery. Now on the downside, there's only a couple of things really. Um, as I said probably way back, it would be great to get 120 frames a second on full frame when I'm shooting video because obviously you're limited to a DX crop and that can be quite annoying because I don't have any really great wide angle lenses. Um, and I could be the biggest problem with it is that I don't own a second one. Um, nowadays when I shoot with two bodies, when I'm working at events and things, I genuinely find that my D4 is 
flagging and being left behind. Now I appreciate it's a generation behind the current cameras, but it's quite disappointing to realise that on my left hip is the D4 and oh, it's only going this fast, but on my right hip is the 850 that just doesn't stop. Um, yeah, that's probably the biggest drawback to the 850 is I'd like another one, please. Hope that was useful, folks. Like, comment and subscribe as you see fit. If you're after more in-depth photo info, I've got courses at photosmudger.teachable.com. And for years worth of professional photography insights, you can head over to my blog at photosmudger.com.